y'all welcome back welcome back to jackie's world how y'all doing today happy sunday all right y'all all right it's pass along sunday time and um i actually wasn't going to do it today i know i always say that but i thought about what my sister said to me she said whatever you do don't stop to pass along sundays okay so today y'all I uh, actually went to two different churches. I went to my church and I went and visited another church that I had never been to before. And it wasn't my intention on going, but you know, the Lord will work in mysterious ways. Sometimes he'll get you to go, you know, a certain way or it's, it's a reason for you to be in that service. Something is there for you, okay? And I know that you don't have to go to church, okay? But this is just for me, all right? If you don't go, this is for me. And that's why I do my pass along Sunday. Because maybe it'll encourage you. Maybe you might want to go. Maybe you might want to know the Lord for yourself. Maybe you might want to read your Bible. Okay, just like I told you in the last episode, in the Pass Along episode, that I was reading, um, my doing my Bible app, and we're doing a 40-day um, in the New Testament. Read the New Testament in 40 days, right? So, what stood out to me this week, and I'm getting ready to do a party mix, uh, a bootleg party mix. But I'm going to get to that in one second. But I'm going to tell you what stood out to me when I was doing it this week. So this word is for you. And I'm going to keep on going on about the churches and everything. But, um, you know, in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they all tell the same story, but from a different perspective, right? So I want you to read that if you can read it. Or let it play to you, because that's what I let it do to me for a lot of time. Take that Bible app and let it play to you. But what stood out to me was that... You know, Jesus was born and everything. And, you know, he was the Messiah. And then he became older, started preaching the word of God, you know, and winning people for God, right? Getting them saved, right? Delivered and, and set them free from all the addictions, afflictions and everything, right? Well, one minute they were so in love with Jesus. They were so consumed by what he was saying they wanted to, to, they couldn't wait to get around him. And there was so many people that was always around him pushing to hear what he had to say, right? But in the end, they wanted to kill him. At one point, they were so in love with him. If you read that passage for yourself, and I'm not going to quote it because I don't really know where it's at. But remember when he had came in on the donkey and everybody was in love with him and they was laying the palms down and they were saying, Hosanna to the highest and all this, right? They were singing songs and worship him and everything, right? And then, once the, one of the disciples, Judas, turned on him, because, you know, the, the, uh, the Pharisees and all of them, they was trying to get him anyway. You know, you always got them people that's trying to get you anyway. You always got them haters, them haters, we would call them the haters. You know what I'm saying? The hip hypocrites, all of them. They be trying to get you, right? And they'll do whatever to take you up out of here. So, after that, they got him, Judas turned him for that little bit of coins, whatever he sold him for, the little bit of pennies or whatever. And he already knew that Judas was the one that was going to turn on him, right? And so he had already foretold his death and everything. And that's the way it was supposed to happen, right? So I'm saying all that to say that one minute they loved Jesus, the next minute they hated him to death to take his life. But like he said, I, I lay my life down. No man take my life. I lay my life down, right? I'm paraphrasing. Read about it for yourself. But anyway, I was sitting up and think about that. One minute, somebody can love you, and they're so in love with you, and make sure they love you so much. I don't care if it's family, friend, or foe, like I say, right? Then the next minute, they hate you enough to take you about it. So if they hated Jesus, and all he did was try to spread the good news, then what make you think that they're not going to hate you too? And he even said it in the Word. Like, everybody that follows me, they're going to hate you just as much as they hated me. And I was thinking about that thing. Because I've been thinking sometimes to myself, you know, you can do so much for people. Do all the good that you want, you know, bow down to them, whatever. And they still can hate you for no reason. Do you understand what I'm saying? And there's probably people on here watching me in the background I don't even know about. They hate even when I do the, the past long Sundays. They hate even seeing me, hate even hearing my voice. But that don't mean nothing to me because God is the only one to, that you have to answer to. Remember that. A person can take your life and all that, but they can't take nothing else. They can't take your soul. They don't know where you're going. You know what I'm saying? So this life is passing away. It's passing away, and we don't understand that. We don't see that. 
All of these catastrophic things is happening in the earth. A lot of times people have already foreseen that. It's already foretold, right? And even in the Bible, it said in the end times in the book of Revelation, it said there going to be wars, rumors of wars, and, and uh, earthquakes in diverse places. The weather's going to be bad. All these things got to happen. But do not be afraid because all of these things must happen. And then the end shall come after the, the word, the gospel is preached to all the earth. So it ain't even the end yet. People tell you it's the end, but it's coming up close, right? And God wanted us to be, pre be prepared for the end. He wanted us to get ourselves together. And sometimes things have to happen in your life to let you see what the bigger picture is. Sometimes those people have to re be removed because you worship in a person. Just like on the big screen, okay? The big screen of what's going on with Diddy and all these people, right? The president, vice president, all these things that's that's in the, in the way that you're looking at, right? And you worrying about all these things. All these things been happening, been going on. And see, what they get you to do is focus on one person or a couple people. And all oh, these people are oh so bad. They knew the people was bad at first. Hello, and they was right along with it, okay? And it's a lot of corruption, a lot of things, a lot of smoke and mirrors to get you focused on that stuff. Even with the social media, okay? It's a lot to get you focused on that stuff, to get your mind absorbed in all these things that don't make no sense, that don't mean you no good or nothing else, and it ain't going to change nothing. Once you stop putting all these people on the pedestal, I don't care if it's the president, I don't care if it's Diddy, I don't care who it is, I don't care if it's me. Once you stop putting the people on the pedestal, you're going to see that, that what you're looking at, that's smoke and mirrors, baby. That's smoke and mirrors. And I'm going to keep saying this like that because God wants you to see what the big picture is. One day, I got to leave here. You got to leave here. We got to answer for ourselves and what we did in the earth. We got to go. We going up or down. And you might not even think that it's no hell. Or you might not say that, oh, it's hell on earth. If you think this is it, honey, you say I'm mistaken because it's more than what, you, what meets the eye that you don't even see, that you don't even know. Okay? And I done got off on a whole nother thing, but I'm just saying that a lot of times I don't even want to do the pastor long subject because I'm not, I don't feel like I'm worthy enough to do it. But in the Bible, they was the, the people was uh, upset, right? The Pharisees, right? All the people, hypocrites, all of them, because of Jesus was with the people that they thought wasn't right. The people that they thought was unclean, unpure. The people that they say, you sitting with these people, they ain't no good. They sinners, they this, they that. And God said, I came not to save the one that's already saved. I came to save the ones that's, uh, that's lost. They need my help. You don't need my help. If you save, you don't need my help. They need my help. Because I got to have people that reach out and come and grab them and get them. You understand what I'm saying? And believe me, I'm just a little peon in the midst of the whole thing. I might not even make sense sometimes to myself. I might not even know why I'm doing it. But just right now, while I'm on the screen, I give my opinion. And this is my own personal opinion about what I feel that the Lord lay on my heart to give to somebody. But you don't listen to me. I ain't nobody. Who am I? Because God going to reveal to you who people is and who they not is. Them smoke and mirror people, you're going to figure it out sooner or later. And you're going to see that in a blink of an eye, like it said, God can come back in a blink of an eye, but in a blink of an eye, you can lose it all. Them people that's been in the path of the hurricane, that could be us. One minute you got a house to live in, the next minute you ain't got nothing. And you still going to worship God? You still going to praise Him? You still going to glorify Him? When you have nothing, you done lost your family, you done lost your, your house, you done lost your cars. Everything underwater, that could be all of us in a split second. That storm could turn and come this way. Another one could come behind that one. What really matters the most is this, is your soul right? Are you right? Is you ready to go? If it's your time to go, if it's my time to go, and I ain't speaking to just you, I'm speaking to myself. You feel me? Why you sitting up here worrying about these mediocre things? These mediocre things about how somebody done you wrong, what did I say, what did I did? And I'm saying that for myself. A lot of times my heart be heavy about the things that they happen in my own divorce and situation. But you got to let all that go. Forgive them people. Because God said you got to forgive those people. So I don't forgive and you. You got to forgive everybody else. I forgive you for your sins. Forgive them and move on. And once you get yourself together, get out for all that extra stuff. Sit down. Have a long time with God. Stop being in everybody's business. Stop letting everybody be in your business. Because I even prayed. I said, Lord, let me be quiet. Let me be quiet sometimes, because sometimes we can say too much and tell people too much they don't need to know. You understand what I'm saying? 
All right, y'all. So <laughs> I'm uh I'm doing the party mix, and this is like my tenth take on this dog one video. Y'all know I don't edit and all that, so I had to do this thing. Like I, I'm telling you, this number, this is probably number ten. I done did this thing. I don't know why, cause the message didn't want to come forth today. But anyway, I'm doing it with this um this pack of chips, right? Out of the ones that me and my daughter don't like. So we usually don't eat the uh popcorn. All right, we usually don't eat the Fritos. Okay. And a lot of times, I'll eat the Cheetos, but she don't eat the Cheetos. Only thing she likes is, is the rest of them. It ain't too much. She just like Doritos, and she like the, the regular Lays and sour cream. All right, so today, I said I'm going to do a video while I'm talking during the Pass Along Sunday and doing the party mix, okay? And I did the, um, and I already poured some in the bowl because I told you this is the 10th take, okay? So I already poured some in the bowl, and I'm using this. Golden Puffs, okay, as my cereal. I don't have any checks. Okay, this is your bootleg. This is your bootleg party mix from some leftover chips that you don't eat. Okay, go with it. So I put um, one bag of popcorn in there, one bag of Fritos, and one bag of Cheetos, and one cup of the um, cereal. But I think I'm going to do one more. And we're going to shake it up. And we're going to try it when it's clean. Okay. Salty and sweet, salty and sweet, baby. And I'm not doing nothing with making no, um, I'm not sitting up there making no butcher corn, no sauce for it. This is no bake. Because why I, I went on YouTube and YouTubed it to see if I could do one that was no bake. And there was a lady on there, baby. She did a no bake, and I'm going to do a no bake. We're going to go with it. And I'm going to do just a little bit more cereal with it. Because she did like one cup of everything. Y'all, I know I got stuff. <laughs> I really wanted to, to show y'all my meatloaf. Well, I didn't have, I didn't stop at the store and get the pan. And I wanted to put it in the, um, another kind of pan. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to shake this up a little bit. To get it mixed around. Get it mixed, mixed around. I know this, this noise is going to get on my nerves. But that's all right. Let me start backing up. Alright y'all, so I did that. Now I'm gonna put it in this bowl and I'm gonna try to tell you what it tastes like if it's garbage, if it's garbage or not. But anyway, y'all, and I gotta say this. This is what I gotta say. Sometimes you gotta stop worrying about everything. You like that? You you like that? I ain't got to put in no extra bowl for real. I don't know why I'm doing that, because I can just, uh, all I'm going to do is eat out that bowl. Mm-hmm. Well, sometimes, I was going to say, sometimes you got to stop worrying about what people think about you and what they're saying about you. Forget them. They can't help you. They can't do nothing for your life. What can they do? Can they pay your bill? Hmm? Can they change anything? Only thing they can do is look and talk. Huh? That's it. And try to make you feel less than. Don't feel less than for nobody. Okay? And I'm saying it for you. But I'm saying it to myself. I like this little. This little jump right here, y'all. This ain't bad. Maybe because I'm hungry. I don't know. But. That's something you can do for like a um a football game or whatever. This is just another you can have a bunch of different mixes out there. I'm gonna fix a sandwich and finish my party mix in a second. But let me finish my little pass along. Y'all, you know, I'm trying to have my apron on. Let me finish my little pass along. So, the rest of what I was going to say was, you ask God to help you in your, in your life, in this situation. You know, God didn't give us a spirit of fear, 2 Timothy 1, 7, but a power of love and a sound mind. So we shouldn't be fearing nothing. What's coming on the earth, we shouldn't be fearing the people, the famine in the land that's coming, the strike, the people that's getting ready to strike. All these things is coming. And it's, and it's getting people worked up. But like my son told me today, mommy, get your food. 
and, and, and make sure you got your water and everything. And that's the same thing for you. If you got enough money or whatever you got, get whatever you can get. Do whatever you can do. If you can help somebody else, you help somebody else. You pray and ask God what you what he what you want him to do. What you want, ask him what you want, what he wants you to do, okay? And um just keep on pushing every day. Because I know it's hard. Believe me, I know it's hard. I give you an encouraging word. The same as I go, I think about the pastors. Like the ones the second pastor said today, you know, we all have struggles. We ain't no saint or nothing. We all have issues, problems. We all addicted to social media and all these kind of things. But you got to think to yourself, yes, you might have an addiction. Yes, you might want to scroll first. But what really matters? Those people on the opposite side of that screen don't even matter. Just like I said, I got my show right down. But sometimes I feel like I want it and I don't want it. Sometimes I feel like I don't want to be always judged and always looked at. You know, especially when you've gone through so much. And it ain't all about the money. Now I even think about it, you know, I say, oh, I wanted 500 subscribers. I got the 500 subscribers and don't have enough watch hours, so it don't even do nothing anyway. I don't get paid from it. So I just do this to get to get the stress off my chest, like I said before. Because to be honest with you, sometimes that stress is so heavy. Sometimes I feel like, you know, and this for somebody else too, that I might take 10 steps forward and take 10 steps right on back. Like I might be doing oh so good, having a, a lovely day, hooping and hollering, acting silly, laughing and playing on here with you but then i turn around and be like sad maybe the next day or next couple days you know and all that stuff trying to come on you and overwhelm you but when i went to that second service i'm gonna tell you this and i was not going as it was eternal events that was the weirdest thing but i knew it wasn't nothing but god sometimes in life is nothing but god okay and i wind up going but it was just weird like i was not intended to go that way right but the pastor just kept singing like I met him at the door. Okay, the service started late. I don't go to late services, y'all. I don't go to 2 o'clock services. All right, so he started singing, and I just felt the Holy Spirit in the atmosphere. You ever felt it in the atmosphere, and you just feel it? And he was singing, um, We worship him, worship Christ our Lord. And he kept on saying, worship him. Worship Christ our Lord. I can't get my voice together today. And um, they were singing another song. But then I started, I was I was in it, right? And everything. But I guess I had got tired from, y'all, I ain't even going to get into the, the, my day. My day was kind of crazy. But um, I guess I was tired from all the extra stuff, right? And I had already been to the early service. So at the end, I was like, oh, he's singing again. But I'm going to tell you. Once he sung that third song before he even got to the, uh, I think it was third or fourth song before he got to the word, I felt this lift off of me, this this heaviness that was there, the the, the depression that be trying to be there to come back on you to hold you down about, oh you know look look at you look at you you know I ain't even gonna go into it you know I ain't even gonna play into the hand right, but I'm just saying people know you know what you struggle with you know what it is, and it lifted. And I was like, but I had sung earlier in the, in the first service too in a different church and did all of that. And I still felt like, why am I here? What am I doing or whatever? And sometimes I'm, I'm putting it this way. Sometimes you're going through the motions of stuff, right? But you're not giving God really his full uh, worship. You're not. You're singing a song, but your mind is somewhere else. You're doing all these things, but you're just there. In the moment and thinking, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm checking the box. It ain't about checking the box. It's about, do you have a real relationship with God? Do you really? Can you talk to him when everything is falling apart? Do you believe in him when you lost everything? When you thought you might was on top and now you're on the bottom? Is this your Job? Like people say, is this your Job experience? Job, even though he, his, I, I feel like if you read the book of Job, he was kind of like, even though he never turned his back on God, he still was like sad, you know, like, why is all this happening to me? Because he was a good man. And that's and that's another uh, message in itself. You can be a good man, a good woman, and still have all these things happen to you. When it said the rain falls on the just and the unjust, just because you a Christian, just because I'm a Christian, so to say, right, that I'm not going to have no problem. Hey, we all going to have problems. We all going to walk through that fire in one way or the other, Okay. And sometimes people, other people got more than others. And that's what you got to think about. That just because you're a Christian, that don't mean your life is going to be great. Because it ain't, baby. 
Hey, did I rhyme that? Did I do that? Y'all, come on now. Come on, let me stop backing up. All right, I'm bringing it to a close because I done 20 minutes, y'all. 20 minutes I done talked to y'all. But anyway, I just want to say, life is not a bed of roses. But just like the pastor said, and I want to get the scripture right that he gave this afternoon. Oh, I can't. And I'm not going to mess it up. I'm not going to flub it. But what he was saying was that a lot of times those storms that it, that's in your life, like I said before, God let them storms come. And you have to walk through those so you can help the next person that's walking through a similar storm that you didn't already walk through. It's for us to go help other people. It ain't for us just to walk in there and don't help nobody else. Because what good are you? When you tell your story or you're telling your story to help somebody or are you telling your story for the pity, for the sympathy? I don't want no pity. I don't want no sympathy. I'm just having, I'm just trying to relieve my stress but also let God work through me if that makes sense. And I don't know why y'all. I guess I sung too much today. My voice is getting extra raspy today. So Jackie better get off the screen and I got to give a kudos, a shout out to my sissy, my big sissy because she the one said Whatever you do, don't stop the fast along Sunday. And I'm not gonna pass I'm not gonna stop passing along as long as God gave me something to say. Because I don't wanna be doing the wrong thing. And it's not to boost myself. None of this is to boost myself. I know sometimes I be acting silly and I do be scrolling through to see how many new subscribers I have. But I don't want anything to glorify me. I want everything I do to glorify God because that's not that's not my intention. And I even told him in the midst of my divorce, I said, God, all this mess that came in my life. Use it for your glory, not for mine, but to win souls for you. And I hope that's what I'm doing. And then in the end, I want him to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. And you want him to say the same thing for you. Oh, and Lisa Page Brooks, Miss Lisa Page Brooks, I hope I'm saying her name right. Y'all know that song that's been viral, that little, uh, and she sang that song, the devil is a liar. Yeah, 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 yeah. The devil is a liar. Yeah, 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 yeah. Y'all. Yeah, 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 she lost a child. She lost so much things, y'all. And you got to say the devil is a liar and keep on going. Because even though you lost it all, you still got Jesus. He's still with you. He's still for you. Even though you by yourself, you're not by yourself. The Lord said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I stood, I stood closer than a brother. He's he always right there with you, no matter who done walked away. All right, y'all, I'm closing out for real. Yeah, 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 yeah. Y'all go check it out. I can't sing like her. I ain't even gonna try. My my raspy voice. I ain't got the pipes like she got. Honey can blow, and I know my sister love to watch her too. Okay. The devil is a liar. Yeah, 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 Let me stop. Let me stop. <laughs> All right, y'all. I thank y'all for tuning in. I thank you for coming. I thank you for liking. I thank you for subscribing. Hey, guess what? Even though, we, didn't, you know, it wasn't really about the party mix. Hello. But, hey, make your own party mix today. Even if you got busting bags or whatever you got there. Get your cereal out. Wait a while. Let's do it. Okay? Let's do it. And I'll see y'all next time on Jackie's World. Mm.